We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is 149 C Law and Order recorded. Oh, we've passed into Saturday. So now it's April Fool's Day 2017, April 1st, uh, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your Stan DeCowan. And I have Daniel Atherton. Unfortunately, David had to, uh, he had to bail because it's tired and stuff. So that's normal. So. Uh, th- just because it's April Fool's Day, that doesn't mean uh, a darn thing around this place. We still have news to talk about. So, if uh, if we make a mistake, let us know. Go ahead and, and send us feedback at Podcast at gmail.com. Phone it in, 470-222-6759. And uh, real quick, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. that We've got Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, Daniel Duncan, and Dan Smith. Thank you very much for contributing to the show ongoing for as long as you have it it uh, it really does mean a lot to us um thank you okay so out on uh, addicting info even though it's a uh, it's it's an aggregate doesn't really matter where this particular source was because it's actually an ap piece so you know um you know that whole Planned Parenthood thing where they were supposedly selling body parts, little fetal body parts and things like that? You know, yeah, because which was that's a fake news, which was a a illegal, mm-hmm. fake, cobbled together thing. Yeah, but is still a favorite Republican talking point for some reason. Oh yeah, Carly Farina just will never let go of it, even though she's yeah. been shown that's fake. Mm-hmm. Well, the makers of that uh, that cobbled together video have been slapped with 15 felony charges for it. 15. Um, of those, probably, I'm guessing six will actually stick. That's which a is whole nice. Bunch. Yeah, it's a whole bunch. So, that's some good news. That's some feel-good news that things things may may work. It doesn't really matter, though, because in the world of alternative facts, they were still just doing God's work. Yeah, I, I saw you cringe there. I, I cringed a little bit on the inside, too. But they I'm, violated the Ten Freaking Commandments. Bear false witness. Oh, yes. Very good. Very good. So, in, uh, in other uh, unfortunate news, a man that was, uh, well, not wearing a Joker mask, but was doing a cosplay of Heath Ledger's Joker. And actually pretty good one too i must say he's been charged with a felony for wearing a mask yeah even though no mask it was makeup yeah no mask um any good lawyer was going to get this tossed out and possibly be able to sue the city um i i know if i had my law degree i'd be all over this because this there's there is money to be made here Mm -hmm. um but no, the law he was arrested under was uh, brought about to actually try and curtail and fight against the Ku Klux Klan. Um, Seventy years times, ago, yeah. Uh, a number of times the law has been amended and slightly changed to allow for, you know, things like Halloween, if it's cold outside, being able to wear a mask yeah. to to heat your face, stuff like that. Um, apparently, some people were. And rightfully so, due to the uh, Aspen shooting, mm-hmm. uh, which is probably the motivation for people seeing somebody dressed like this, and they're scared. They call the cops, and the cops respond irresponsibly. And just arrest this guy based on an old law that probably one of the cops found on the books or was familiar with. And they're going to try and prosecute him, which I think is insane. Yeah, it it doesn't really make sense because it's clearly not a mask. And any lawyer worth his salt is going to make that stick. So... I'm I'm going... And the the crazy thing is, he was carrying a sword. Uh, Which is not illegal. But apparently it's not illegal. But they tried no. to get him on a mask, which he wasn't wearing. So, yeah, this uh, this is likely to fall apart, but uh, really, uh, 
I, I wanted to include this because cosplay is a thing that people do, yeah. and it it makes people happy. This is, and a lot of people really. Uh, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker is a meaningful experience in many people's lives. Whether it's, it be happy, it's a seminal it be performance, sad, and it, yeah. So he was celebrating that in in whatever way he chose at the time. I have no idea what the hell he was doing with the sword, but he was probably having a good time. And, well, he's now on a $2,000 secured bond with the Winchester Police Department in Putnam. Well, holding Mr. Putnam. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. It may just fizzle out, but otherwise the American Civil Liberties Union may have something to say about it. If I was the DA in that case, I would try and get tossed out have the cops apologize and blow this all over. <laughs> right. We'll see. And uh, let's move right along to, oh, South Korea. The former South Korean president arrested on bribery charges? Oh, do tell. Um, well, if you've been keeping up with international news, um, that's why I there heard. have been a number of of protests over uh, disgraced former president uh, Park Geun Hye. Um, so I'm showing her face now on the video. Yeah, um, she was just recently jailed um, during her her four year rule. Um, it was thought uh, a a long time. Uh, friend who had some religious and financial ties uh, compromised her in office, and there were there were protests that were massive. We are talking if you you just Google South Korea protest, um, it, it it was like watching, you know, one of those international football, you know, riots, but they were orderly. There was no violence um, with these protests, and they eventually got her ousted. Um, And now she is facing abuse of power, bribery, and extortion charges with the possibility of life imprisonment. So, Hmm. peaceful, peaceful protest works and those who are corrupt will be ousted and held to justice boy if we could keep things like that around here in the united states that'd be a grand thing wouldn't it it takes organized peaceful protest on a massive scale yeah well we don't seem to like protest here in the united states very much anymore in fact oh you know maybe we should uh maybe we should talk about uh that bad idea? Yeah, the how bad could it be? Because this this makes sense. So, pulling that up now, uh, yeah. the UN. The UN has decided that uh, you know some things are not doing so well here in the United States. Apparently, there is an alarming trend of legislation against free speech and protest here in the United States. Nineteen U.S. states have introduced bills that would curb freedom of expression and the right to protest since Donald Trump's election as president. It is alarming and undemocratic uh, trend, according to the U.M. Human Rights Department. Uh, Vestigar said this on Thursday. Um, he has branded the media, which is, you know, free speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The people that report the news. That whole fourth estate uh, thing. At, yeah, the... They are the enemy of the American people. Yeah, in and, no uncertain words. That is exactly what he said. Yes. And, I mean, he just came out this week uh, in response to the New York Times uh, pushing to have uh, libel laws changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to make it to easier to go curb, against them, yeah. Cur- further curb free speech. Um but uh, Maina Kaye and David Kay, independent UN experts on freedom of peaceful assembly and expression, respectively said in a statement that the state bills were incompatible with international human rights law. 
Uh, the trend also threatens to jeopardize one of the United States constitutional pillars, free speech. Uh, from the Black Lives Matter movement to the environmental and Native American movements in uh, opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Women's March, individuals and organizations across American society have mobilized in peaceful protest. And so far, legislators' response has been trying to curtail elements of free speech. Um, yeah. So, like Missouri, there's a bill proposed with a seven-year prison term for unlawful obstruction of traffic. Now, when you protest, you you typically, when you're organizing one, mm -hmm. you, you get a permit. Yeah. You let the city know ahead of time what you're doing in accordance with the law in peaceful protest. Right. Uh, and by our constitution, freedom of assembly is a thing. Yes. So, but state governments are now, and most of these states are Republican controlled, mm -hmm. are trying to limit assembly and limit speech. Indiana, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Missouri. All wanting people to not have basic free speech. Or right to assembly. Yeah. Mm. I really would love for more and more folks in those states, when you have a town hall, first ask the question, do you support the Constitution? Which they will invariably say yes. Then ask them the question, find the bill, find the number, find the name. And go, how is this in line with the Constitution? How does this can not you violate Yeah, can the you square this against the First Amendment? How can you defend this? Yeah. Put it to your politicians. Set them up because, mm -hmm. well, they'll, they'll, they'll take the bait and then crush them. At the very least, it should be entertaining to see what they do. They're, most of them can't handle the mental gymnastics anymore because, let's face it, we have defunded education to the point where we've got chimps in suits. I'd like to think that most of them are at least a little bit more intelligent than that. But chimps are actually quite smart. I, I, I might actually <laughs> vote for a chimp before okay. some of the people that have been propped up. Okay. Yeah, I can't I can't deny that one. Okay, you got me. You got me there. Okay, so that was um That was how bad could it be. That was how bad That's could it pretty be. Bad. Yeah. And um then also we've got uh, so far this year, thirty five mosques yeah. have been attacked. Now, to put that in perspective, specifically that means in the United States, a, <laughs> a U.S. mosque has been attacked for every two and a half days that have happened this year. That's pretty bad. And yeah. have we heard anything from the White House about this? No. Have we heard anything about this from any Republican senator or representative? Oh, from Republicans? No. They're too busy trying to make sure that uh, the Muslim bans that are not Muslim bans legally or whatever, uh, they're trying to make sure those go through. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just going to mention not all... 35, but the hotbeds where this has happened more than once. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Bellevue, Washington, Bayonne, New Jersey, Silver Spring, Maryland, and the leader with four, four wow. Atlanta, Georgia. Hmm. Atlanta, you got some problems with, uh, you know, bridges on fire and things like that. And Oh, yeah. No, th this is a massive issue, and it goes, as you can see with the map over here on Mike, it's coast to coast. Mm -hmm. 
it it is in you even know in, uh, even in Hawaii on Honolulu. Yep, it's everywhere across the U.S. And honestly, I you can't defend this. You can't rationalize this. This is just hate. Yeah. And it goes against everything that this country is based on. Everything. <sighs> freedom of religion. Freedom to be able to practice your beliefs in peace is what this nation was founded on. And most of these individuals who have perpetrated these crimes are white Christian men. Yeah, and one assault in particular saw a man try to break into a mosque, mm -hmm. and when he couldn't do it with the screwdriver he had on him, he broke down the door and threw in a copy of the Bible. Well, that's kind of telling. I, if I could interview that man, I'm go I would. The first thing I would ask is, did you read that book? Only, only the special parts. Very specific. He, here, here's. I know I'm going off on a rant here, but damn it, I need to. That's what this show's for. <laughs> I put it to you, and to any Christians listening out there, I put it to you as well that the whole of Christianity, whole of the Law and the Prophets, goes down to, in some of the books, the red letters. By that I mean mm. what Christ specifically stated. All right? You call yourself a Christian. That means you walk in the teachings of Christ. That is what each, I have heard purported, and I, I have said myself, to mean to be a Christian. What did Christ say about breaking into places and throwing copies of holy texts? What, what did he specifically state on this? Given that they didn't really have books, they only had scrolls, there was never any book throwing, that's for sure. Yeah. He does not. I mean, if you want, Christ was violent. Mm -hmm. I will give yeah. you that. He whipping, got very upset that they lenders. were trading money yeah. in a holy place. Mm -hmm. He threw over tables and took a whip and drove money lenders out. Mm -hmm. That has happened, yeah. Okay, so Christ could be violent. I'll give you that. It was an option. But. The only time he committed violence was the, the, the secular trading of money in a holy site. That is the one time we can cite that and see this. The rest of the time, he is healing the sick. He is ha dining with sinners. Mm -hmm. with. with I mean, one of his followers was a tax collector, one of the most hated individuals in the known world at that time. You have the story of Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. This is a person who, by the company he kept, those who were in power and well-to-do thought him deplored. Right. And when asked about this, he goes, do the healthy need a doctor? I put to you that if you're going to call yourself a Christian, you better act like it. Otherwise, stop claiming to be Christian. Really, the uh, I, I have to I have to absolutely agree, and you know I'm I'm kind of I kind of fill the role of the the angry atheist on occasion here. So with uh, with that. The, the most fundamental 
of the faith are not acceptable either. So, if you don't follow the the letter of the word, then most of the time, the it's the moderates. They're the ones that lead the church. You know, it's kind of like uh, like weather versus climate change. You know, there's there's high points, there's low points, there's high points, there's low points, but it's not tracking those, it's tracking the middle. So if you track the middle of the pack for those that call themselves Christians, without a particular denomination, you know, it, it could be anything from Episcopal to Methodist to, to even the Baptists, you know, the, the message that modern Christians have adopted is one of peace, of all the good things that Jesus said, and none of the bad stuff from the Old Testament. All that stuff is there just kind of to, to keep the parish in line, and that's about that. They don't really buy into it that much. And if they do, then they fall in line with the Westboro Baptist Church, and they're ostracized. Because they do not fit the middle-of-the-road moderate average Christian. It's probably those that are falling into the line of the more extreme that are the ones that are doing this. Just like it is the ones that are falling into the extreme on the Islamic side that are doing things like being in line with ISIS and Boko Haram and all of the violence. And those aren't Muslims, if you ask a moderate Muslim. Right, but you see, it's the moderate Muslim. It's the moderate Christian. In fact, it's also the moderate Jew and the moderate Buddhist, the moderate Hindu. All of them, the middle of the road, the average of all of those faiths, simply want peace. They really do. They just want to be left alone, mostly. Their gods and their faith traditions, they're important to them in a grounding way. They make them, they give them a sense of purpose in an Community otherwise... Community and perspective. Yeah, and, and an otherwise rudderless life. You know, it, life is difficult. As an atheist, I have come to terms with not having these things be a guiding force, so I know what's missing. So I, I can see that this is something that helps people. But it doesn't necessarily... It's not a hard and fast rule with the middle of the road. And really, the middle of the road is what the religion has become. Whether or not you you are a strict fundamentalist, whether or not you go back to being a Calvinist or any any number of of very interesting religious traditions, and I know many of them, and some of them really need to be just shelved on history. But what you have now is Christian light. And Christian light, you ignore most of the book, and you just be nice to one another. That's really the deal. Don't be a douchebag. Don't be an asshole. As, as, um, oh gosh, I've forgotten his name now. Uh, Will Wheaton. Mm. The Wheaton rule. Don't be a dick. Pretty much all religious texts and most laws can be distilled down to that. Don't be a dick. Yeah. If Uh, you're attacking a mosque, you're a dick. Yeah. Also, I'm calling upon, you know, we are asking here in this country for when any, any Muslim, and now with Trump, any foreigner, any immigrant, if any crime has been committed by these groups, that you come out and denounce that act. Mm-hmm. Well, it's about fair time that when, you know, crazy white Christian guy goes and does something terrible, you have to come out and denounce them. Yep. 
you have to call a terrorist a terrorist. Even and if you're all about the forgiveness and, and you know the blood of Christ, etc., you still have to hold them accountable for their actions. You have to acknowledge what they've done, mm -hmm. and you have to denounce it. So, when you keep seeing these white male faces that have done these horrible things, you need to call them terrorists. Mm -hmm. And you need to call them for what they self-identify as. They are either white supremacist terrorists, or they are Christian terrorists. Yeah. And you could go ahead and, and go ahead and, and take the take the same verbiage that has been become very popular on the right. Radical Christian terrorist. Yeah. You like radical Islamic terrorists? Then go ahead. It's radical Christian terrorist. Why not? Otherwise, that taste in your mouth, if you don't like it, it's called hypocrisy. And let's, let's, let's face it, folks. If we're going to hold these cultures to this standard, we have to hold ourselves to this standard. Mm -hmm. You're the one that has to look at yourself in the mirror every day. I don't have to look at you out there. I don't know who you are. That's fine. But would you like to look at yourself and know that you've done the right thing by your own religion? By the people that you're around? By your family? What would your grandmother say? What would Jesus do? And if you can't even think about that, framing from a couple of episodes ago, what would Mr. Rogers do? Oh, right in the heart. Right there. Right there. See, any time that Mr. Rogers is invoked on the show, that means that the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the way of it. So if you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O and get early access to the full show content and uh, extras and miscellaneous other things. You can make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking, get us in front of more people. Use your words. Tell someone about the show, about us, about everything that we've talked about. Educate some people, would you? And, of course, engage us. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com or if you're the more talkative sort, we've got that voice line number out there at 470-222-ORLY. That's 6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 273 8255. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been Overly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you real soon.